It is a brave decision to start sketching in front of a professional What's artist. Front? It's quite a big bum on it. That's the head. Paul Childerly is trying to illustrate where Katie needs to put her shot on one of his Chinese uh -huh. water deer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, right. So, come up. Obviously, yeah, we talked about yesterday in that area there. So, when you come up, I'll talk you through it when we're, when we're out there. Yeah. I'm vegan, but I am pro-conservational hunting. I think it's really important that it happens and if it happens ethically and sustainably and properly then I think that it's it's right. The little deer is the reason she is here today. Paul saw her first charcoal of a CWD for sale in a gallery in London and says it is the best representation he has seen. Wow. We met about four and a half years ago in Beretta Gallery, there was like a rifle launch, and I somehow managed to have my first exhibition in that. So I was just showing a couple of pieces, and that's kind of where my business kicked off as well. So he was there at the beginning. So he liked it, but he didn't buy it. This is the thing that's slightly embarrassing and awkward that the fact that he didn't buy it. Not yet. <laughs> Today, she gets to see her first one in the flesh. You can carry it. Okay. Uh, nothing in there. Okay, okay. so we'll load it when we get out there, okay? okay. Stick it on your shoulder. That way? Uh, other way. Paul is part way through his cull, and Katie wants to be part of it. That's not the sort of thing you'd expect from a vegan, but she has her reasons, which we will explore in a bit. Now, Paul expects the bucks to start rushing in late November and December. It's not just the visible indicators of chasing and fighting, they make a noise too. In the last few days of the frost, they just started chasing a little bit. I just did a little bit of clicks. So I want to hear the clicks. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure. <laughs> What's that? Actually, he's like that. As they're running, the bucks are running. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Do it again. You move your lips don't move. <laughs> Come on. It's a clicking noise, Does it attract them? No, the bucks do it aggressive, it's like an aggressive thing. Oh okay. I was expecting loads of those to just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the story of his life. <laughs> oh dear. So that doesn't actually do anything, doesn't it? It just bring it, him in. Doesn't antagonise another it, buck. It, if you're close to, if you could do it, loud, I can't do it very loud, but they do it quite loud. So it's like an ultra sight sound, if you know what I mean. And they'd be like 150 yards away, and you can hear it quite clear as a bell. And they do it when they start chasing, when they when they start almost when they won a bar, they like chase and they, they click so they show show the sign that they won. Um, but yeah, so it's like a victory sound. It's a bit yeah, it's like dominant sound yeah, but. You normally sort of hear it out there and you can almost pinpoint where it's coming from and then you know there's a buck in that, that spot. There's nothing suitable on this part of the ground, but then Paul spots an older buck with broken tusks. He needs it gone as they tend to become more aggressive when they're like that. Paul has left his new Sacco S20 in the cabinet today. For novices, he likes using the Sacco 85 synthetic stainless in 22250. Safety off when you get onto him. Woo! You bugger. That's fine, that's fine. Okay, keep going sideways. He was a perfect buck. He was an old buck, broken, totally broken on one side, and he had a uh, three quarters of a tusk on the other side. And on his, and his um, rump here, he had a big, massive load of ha hair missing, where obviously he'd been fighting a lot. So it'd have been perfect one to take, just as they're coming up to the rut as well. Unfortunately, we have to be rolled and crawled, he got the better of us, and then uh, the cameraman come running around the back. <laughs> you know, I don't know about you, David. Basically, the time was done, it wasn't meant to be. So.
over on the other side of a game crop, Paul spots another animal suitable for his management plan. We get into position and wait. Oh, real close. One really close. Then a youngster pops out just in front of us. Let's see, I'll see it, David. We shoot that one. That's perfect. Come back on to him. Comfortable? Boop! No rush. Squeeze it off gently. Shit. It's alright. It's good. It's alright. We're good. Dead. Done. Seriously. I did that very well. You did, honestly, no problem at all. Okay. The animal dropped on the spot. We'll have a look in a minute, but. It's still. There yeah, will be for a bit. No problem. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> Mixed of emotions, I imagine, Katie. Yeah. I'm, I'm worried that I've heard it and it's. No, no. Okay. You don't need to choose it again. No, 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 it's dead. Honestly. Katie worries she's messed up, but she has made a perfect shot. It's a perfect shot, well done. Young buck, it's a good one to take off. As you can see, we've got lots and lots and lots, so we have to shoot a few to reduce the numbers. I, I would eat it, but I wouldn't kill it for the meat. So I, would, I killed it because it's part of the conservation like effort towards helping the species helping the surrounding habitats to support the numbers of deer. And because the meat is a byproduct, I'd be happy to eat it. I know that I've killed it in a you know in, a, in the proper fashion. I haven't just gone and killed something for fun. It's you know it had a reason. And then the the enjoyment of it and the meat is kind of a a byproduct I think. So I'm very impressed actually you've done this today because after me killing a wasp yesterday and there was a big massive queen wasp in the shoot lodge and um, we have a problem with them in there and of course I see her, I stood on it and I humanely dispatched it as well I thought but obviously it's still moving so I was in nerves but Katie sort of told me off. I don't think it was nerves, I think it wasn't quite dead and he just was like yeah that's done and I was like it's still moving. So, the, so, so, so that's yeah. why the doubt about this one this morning then you've been damaged by him already. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I basically <laughs> you didn't believe him? No. no. All good. It's clear Katie was dealing with lots of different thoughts and emotions throughout the stalking experience. But it is a responsibility she wants to take on. Venison is a byproduct. She wants to reduce the grazing pressure on the local environment. Ultimately, vegans are trying to reduce suffering of animals and to protect wildlife protect ecosystems so i think in that way like gamekeepers have the same objectives right it's like there are so many parallels and i think sometimes the two sides they kind of conflict you know supermarkets and stuff are so good at making meat not look like an animal it's actually really kind of nice to see it properly done and like you have that connection, you know what it was. Right, huge tangent, Christmas cards. <laughs> so all of, my, all of my cards are printed on recyclable and <laughs> recycled paper. So I, yeah. I'm, I'm basically, I'm trying to be as like sustainable in my business as possible, so I'm you know, using recycled card and envelopes to send them in and stuff, so. Katie's work covers game species from all over the world. It's not just the UK stuff, such as this roebuck, photographed by Dan Beardsmore, and her newest Chinese water deer, taken from a shot by Dean White. Katie's motivations are exactly the same as wildlife managers, to keep a natural balance. That doesn't exist without human intervention, or rather, hunter intervention. So if you love your planet and don't want to pull the trigger, try and understand why we do. Katie gets it. And if you'd like to see more of Katie's work, visit her website katiehargreavesart.com.